Hey guys, this is Caleb from the Command Valley coming at you with another Commander 2020 Precon Upgrade video. Here on the Command Valley, we talk about all things Commander, provide you with weekly deck techs to help you brew, gameplay videos, and so much more. Before we get into the video, I'd like to give a huge shout out to our channel sponsor, GameGrid Lehigh. If you are in the Utah County area, you need to check out their store. They've got an amazing card archive, a huge selection for card and deck accessories, and an incredibly helpful and friendly staff. Don't worry if you're not in the Utah County area, we will include a link to their website in the show notes and you can still buy all your magic needs and more there. Also, please be sure to like this video, subscribe if you haven't yet, and even hit that bell to be notified about our weekly deck techs and other videos. We truly appreciate your support. All right, today's video is all about the new Commander 2020 Precon Enhanced Evolution and its commander, Otrimi the Ever Playful. Otrimi costs 3 generic, 1 black, 1 green, and 1 blue mana to cast, and he is a 6-6 nightmare beast with trample. And, whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, return target creature card with mutate from your graveyard to your hand. He also has mutate, which is an alternate casting cost of 1 generic, 1 black, 1 green, and 1 blue mana. The reminder text on mutate says... If you cast this spell for its mutate cost, put it over or under target non-human creature you own. Then mutate it into the creature on top plus all abilities from under it. It's super exciting that we get this year's commander product right alongside the release of the new set and that we get to experience the new mechanic mutate in this precon. Mutate is a very unique and sometimes confusing new ability. I'm not going to attempt to tackle all of the different interactions creatures with Mutate will have with other creatures and abilities in this video. However, I will talk about a few. Please feel free to leave a comment if you are viewing this episode on YouTube with any questions that you might have and we will do our best to answer them. With all of that out of the way, the point of this video today is to talk about some of the cards that I think can be taken out of the pre-con cards that can be easily added because they are budget friendly, and other more expensive cards that can be added if convenient. First let's talk about creatures. There's an X Spells Matter and Hydra theme throughout this deck because of one of the alternate commanders X Sara that I'm sure we'll talk about in another video. Because we're going to be talking about upgrading this deck for Otrimi, I suggest taking out most, if not all, of this part of the deck, including Zaxara. You don't have to, and some cards like Hungering Hydra aren't necessarily bad with Otrimi, but our goal is to focus on Otrimi. So creatures that I suggest taking out of this category are Hungering Hydra, Zaxara, Capricopian, Genesis Hydra, Hero's Bane, and Vastwood Hydra. Other creatures that aren't super optimal include Archipelagor and Auspacious Sterix, both of which I feel are too expensive for what they do and can be easily replaced by better mutate creatures from the main set. Two more are Boneyard Mycodrax and Predator Ooze. Our three drops are going to be very important for our strategy that we'll talk about a little bit later and these cards are pretty terrible when we need them to be great. Neither of these are very playable on turn three, so that's why they're coming out. Fertilid and Masked Admirers can also be replaced by better ramp and better card draw. The reason that we really care about three drop creatures is because the turn after we've cast a three drop, Otrimi can be cast from the command zone for his mutate cost for only four mana. For example, we can play Tomebound Lich, which is a 1-3 zombie wizard, not a human, so it can be mutated, and he's got Death Touch and Lifelink, and whenever Tomebound Lich enters the battlefield or deals combat damage to a player, draw a card, then discard a card. Then on the next turn, mutate Otrimi on top of Tomebound Lich, and you've got a 6-6 with Trample, Death Touch, Lifelink, and both triggered abilities that go off when it deals combat damage to a player. It also has Pseudo Haste because it is the same creature that was played the turn before, even with Otrimi on top. So you can go ahead and swing with this crazy trampling beast, gain 6 life, kill whatever's in your path, most likely deal some commander damage to a player, then proceed to stack the triggered abilities so that you draw a card, discard a card, hopefully it's a mutate card, and then return that mutate card or another mutate card from your graveyard to your hand. The value is real and the Timmy inside of me cannot wait to make plays like this with this deck. Other creatures we can add that are similar to Tomebound Lich are Demir Cutpurse, Leyline Prowler, Thief of Sanity, Turn Timber Basilisk, and Vidalcan Heretic. 
One of the biggest weaknesses that this deck and commander have is removal. Similar to how one go for the throat or murder can cripple a strategy that relies on auras, losing one of our mutated creatures often means losing multiple cards. Let's talk about some other 3 drop or less creatures that we can add for Otrimi to safely play with. Cards like Chilling Apparition, Dark Steel Mur, Rakshasa Death Dealer, Silhanna Ledgewalker, Slippery Boggle, Troll Aesthetic, and Yehini Undying Partisan can help Otrimi and our other mutate creatures with abilities like Hexproof, Indestructible, and Regenerate. Otrimi also helps to balance out this weakness with his last ability to return mutate cards from our graveyard to our hand. An example of a crazy interaction with mutated creatures are cloning abilities. A couple that we could consider adding are Miss Syndicate Naga and Spawnwrith that make copy of themselves when they deal damage to an opponent. This brings up a couple of points about mutate that I will briefly talk about. Cards that refer to themselves like Spawnwrith that says, when Spawnwrith deals combat damage to a player, put a token that's a copy of Spawnwrith onto the battlefield, really say this creature. So if you've mutated a Dreamtail Heron on top or on bottom of your Miss Syndicate Naga, in this case it should definitely go on top, and you deal combat damage to a player with it, you will get a copy of Dreamtail Heron with flying whenever this creature mutates, draw a card, and Miss Syndicate Naga's ability to make copies of itself. Just be careful not to do this with any legendary creatures because the legend rule will apply and force you to sacrifice any additional copies that you make of, for example, Otrimi this way. Micaeus the Unhallowed is an expensive but really cool card to include if you can. For 3 generic and 3 black mana, he's a 5-5 zombie cleric with Intimidate. Whenever a human deals damage to you, destroy it, and other non-human creatures you control get plus 1 plus 1 and have Undying. He's a good target for mutating, but even more than that, he protects our strategy really well by giving all of our creatures Undying. When a creature with Undying dies, if it had no plus one plus one counters on it, you get to return it to the battlefield under its owner's control with a plus one plus one counter on it. The reason this works great with our mutate strategy is that when one of our stacks of two or three mutated creatures dies, then all of them will come back but separately and with a plus one plus one counter on each of them. This can make your opponents hold back board wipes like Wrath of God, and make your board wipes like Deadly Tempest nearly one-sided. Lastly, let's talk about some creatures from the new set that slot right into this deck. Brokos Apex of Forever is a 6-6 for 2 generic, 1 black, 1 green, and 1 blue with Trample, and you may cast Brokos Apex of Forever from your graveyard using its mutate ability, which costs 2 generic, 1 blue-black hybrid, and 2 green mana to do. This is another great way to get around our deck's inherent weakness. Other mutate creatures include Dirge Bat and Gem Razor, which both have abilities that say whenever this creature mutates, then destroy something. Dirge Bat destroys a creature or planeswalker, and Gem Razor destroys an artifact or enchantment. Both have decent bodies with great abilities. Parcel Beast and Sea Dasher Octopus are mutate creatures that can provide a little bit of extra value when played correctly. There are a lot of cool creatures that you can add to this deck, and I'm sure that I've missed some. Just remember that as you are adding and testing new creatures in your mutate deck, that you don't try mutating onto any humans. It only works for non-humans. I've already seen people on Facebook and other places talking about putting Invisible Stalker in their Tremie decks. Don't do it. You can, however, include many creatures with Infect that go really well with mutate, but you didn't hear that from me. On to Ramp. We already talked about taking out Fertilid for something better. Bonder's Ornament is pretty much awful. If you can, you should upgrade it immediately. You can also upgrade cards like Animist's Awakening, which was in this deck for Zaxara. Migration Path is actually pretty good and a strictly better explosive vegetation thanks to the cycling ability, but you may want to upgrade it as well even if you don't have to. That one's up to you. Birds of Paradise is a pretty good early mana dork that can also be mutated to give one of your bigger creatures flying. You've got plenty of ramp spells to choose from including Cultivate, Rampant Growth, Sky Shroud Claim, Farseek, Nature's Lore, etc. The Great Henge is currently pretty expensive, but if you have one and you want to throw it in, it's an incredible card. It also slots in as card advantage. Other than that, I wouldn't run any additional mana rocks besides the Arcane Signet, Soul Ring, and Manascape Refractor that are included in the precon, which are all insanely good. 
We already took out Masked Admirer's and Bonder's ornament, but as for additional card advantage, we can probably stand to lose Illusory Ambusher, which is pretty good, and Mole Drifter if we really have to. You may disagree with Mole Drifter, and I think I might too, so only pull it as a last resort. Mindspring can be traded out for Pull From Tomorrow, which is an instant instead of a sorcery, and the cost to upgrade it to an instant, which is discarding a card, feels a lot less bad with our commander being able to return mutate cards to our hand from our graveyard. Other upgrade options include Colossal Majesty that draws us a card each turn at the beginning of our upkeep if we have a creature with power 4 or greater, and Season of Growth that allows us to scry one whenever a creature ETBs under our control, and then draw a card whenever we cast a spell that targets a creature we control. Note that Mutate is still casting and it requires you to target a creature, so it will draw us a card with Season of Growth. Guardian Project is okay in this deck. It's not amazing like it usually is because mutating doesn't cause it to trigger. I'm not sure how well it would work to be honest. It might still be better than Season of Growth though, so we'll have to test it, but I'm probably leaning more towards Guardian Project anyway. Return of the Wild Speaker is pretty amazing in this deck. You're going to have some huge non-human creatures to draw cards from or end the game with depending on which mode you choose. I really like this card for this deck. Rishkar's Expertise is right behind Return of the Wild Speaker. Rhystic Study is an obvious choice for any blue deck, but it's a little expensive, so if you can include it, be sure to do so. If not, don't worry too much about it. Buried Alive, Gerard's Orders, and Shared Summons are great tutors to get exactly which creatures you need when you need them. With Buried Alive, you'll want to grab all mutate creatures most of the time, unless you've got an Animate Dead or Reanimate in hand. And Tomb and obviously Demonic Tutor are great in this deck as well, but a little bit more on the expensive side, especially Demonic Tutor. Again, if you have them, play them. As I mentioned before, this deck's biggest weakness is targeted removal, so some options for protection are the classic shoes, Swiftfoot Boots, and Lightning Greaves. Lightning Greaves is a little cheaper than usual right now, thanks to some recent reprints, so be sure to pick them up while they're still cheap. Speaking of going down in price, Asceticism is finally affordable again, and is so good in this deck. It gives your creatures hexproof and allows you to regenerate a target creature for one generic and one green. Pick them up at the price they are now while you still can. Vines of Vastwood, Blossoming Defense, and Sheltering Word are each one-time spells that can protect our creatures at instant speed. The best version of this that we can play in this deck is Heroic Intervention, which has recently dropped a little in price, but is still around 15 bucks at the time of this recording. The removal in this precon is already pretty good. We've also already added a few mutate creatures that can be used as repeatable removal. The best upgrade that we can probably make to the targeted removal is taking out Putrefy for Assassin's Trophy, which is pretty expensive, but just so good. Also, if you're picking up this precon, enjoy your new Deadly Rollick. It's easily one of the best new cards in the set, and I know that I'm super excited for mine. Fine Finality is not terrible, and I might just be biased against split cards, but I plan on taking this out for something more efficient as soon as possible. Find is the best part of the card, but Finality is just too unreliable, and Gaze of Granite is also a really unreliable board wipe. The three obvious and probably best board wipes that we can add are Damnation, Toxic Deluge, and Cyclonic Rift by a mile. But if you don't have them, don't worry, Gaze of Granite and Finality are just fine. This deck also comes with Deadly Tempest, so no worries. On to Planeswalkers. Nissa is great and all, but I think that I'd rather play Vivian, Champion of the Wilds, for both flavor and function. Giving our creatures flash is so good when we can flash mutate in the middle of combat. Not to mention, the vigilance and reach for an entire turn cycle will keep even our opponents with flying creatures on their toes when it comes to attacking us. Vivian Monster's Advocate also looks really fun and seems like she would be really good in this deck. Again, remember that Mutate is an alternate casting cost and creatures with Mutate can be cast from the top of your library with their Mutate cost with Vivian's second static ability. You can also Mutate onto the 3-3 Beast token with your choice of Vigilance, Reach, or Trample that she provides with her plus one ability. I don't know how expensive she'll be, but hopefully you can get your hands on one for this deck because she looks great. Lastly, here are some additional cards that we can probably go ahead and cut. All three Impetus enchantments are really not that great. 
If you want this kind of effect in your deck, then go for it. The idea is to make it so that your opponent's creatures can't attack you, or you get a decent buff for enchanting your own creatures. I'm just not really a big fan of any of them. Dredge the Mire is good for getting your opponent's little utility creatures like Bloom Tender early game, but it's not the most reliable card. It's not bad, it's just not my favorite new card here in this deck. Profane Command can definitely just go. It's there for Hydras, and we don't really care about Hydras. I'm sad to say it because it's super fun, but this deck can also live without Villainous Wealth. I know, I know. Though I wouldn't fault anyone for keeping it in because, like I said, it is a super fun card. Alright, you've made it to the end of the video. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to comment below and tell us if you think there's anything that we missed, if you have any questions, and what other Commander 2020 or Aquaria Commanders you'd be interested in seeing us do videos for. Also, please like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit that bell to be notified about our weekly deck techs, set reviews, and gameplay videos. Also, feel free to check out the deck list in the show notes. Thanks, guys, girls, and goats.